Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here. And in today's GTA 5 video, we are going to be talking about 15 things you need to know before you end up purchasing the Ocelot Locust sports car when it arrives in Grand Theft Auto Online. So this is certainly one of the more unique vehicles from this update. In fact, I'm actually surprised it didn't arrive on day one because we saw this vehicle featured in the trailers and in the couple of screenshots that Rockstar gave us beforehand. But lo and behold, it became a drip feed vehicle. And speaking of that, let's take a look at it on the Legendary Motorsports website. You guys can see that it could be coming out fairly soon. Uh, if this website release order is correct, only the Progen Emrys is ahead of it. And it is $1,625,000. Pretty pricey for a sports car. And when I first saw this vehicle, I was like, ooh, that's cool. It reminds me of the Hijack Rustin, another topless sports car. And in case you guys are wondering what vehicle this is most closely based off of in real life, it takes references from two Lotus vehicles, the Lotus 211 and the Lotus 311. I'm sure there's a lot of similarities in both of those cars and how Rockstar ended up designing it in game. So before we get started and before we end up taking this into the Los Santos Custom Shop, let's quickly take a listen to the engine sound and the interior too. So it actually sounds really good and obviously you can see the interior there. By default this car is completely topless. So now let's bring it into the Los Santos Custom Shop. I was a little bit surprised that it only had 18 customization options. But let's get into it and let's start customizing this car. The first thing that we can change is the exhaust options. And on this vehicle you can put some pretty interesting ones there. They all stay in the same spot which is right below the license plate. So if you wanted to get a box design or a split design, you can. After that, we need to move on to front bumpers where there is a handful of options there. You can keep it pretty simple or you can add some interesting splitters and regular and carbon fiber designs. So you can make it pretty fancy if you want. From there, we can modify the hood where again, you can keep things simple by just adding a scoop or you can add things like a power bulge or a bunch of vents and really make it crazy. So lots of things that you can do there. Now, after we've modified the hood, we move on to our liveries. So the first livery is very simple. It is black stripe, which sort of puts an offset black stripe on the right-hand side of the car, and it goes all the way from front to back. White stripe is the exact same thing, but obviously, as you guessed it, instead of it being in black, it is in white. I do like simple liveries like this, and this one does look pretty good. And there's even a third variant of it, which is called Yellow Stripe. Now, it's a little bit hard to see based off of the color I have right now, but it's the exact same as the one we saw before. The next livery is Kronos, and Kronos is a pretty cool one. It's sort of a variation of Black Stripe with like way more sponsorships and advertisements. So you can see the, the door sill is sort of filled in with white and Kronos and a bunch of other liveries. And uh, on both sides of the car, you can see that. Following that, it's Escalera, which is a thick white stripe on the hood, roof, and rear of the car. And some more sponsorships on the side and on the door sill as well. That's Escalera. The next one is Exorbed, which I actually kind of like. The stripes on this vehicle can be found on like the spoiler and above the front wheel arches. And it actually looks really cool. And then, of course, there's sponsorships and advertisements on the side of the car. So that's Exorbed. NARC is also a really good one. It's like this sort of jagged, cartoony flame look on the front with NARC on the door sill. There's also some fun designs on the spoiler and whatnot. I actually really, really like that one a lot. I think my favorite one of the bunch is this Jackal one, though. It almost looks like it has... Uh, claw marks going through various parts of the car and those claw marks are filled in with really vibrant colors like light blues and lime greens and bright pinks and oranges and I really like that and it makes the uh, mirrors like this lime green too so I really like the Jackal Racing one 
After that, it is Excelsior. Hopefully, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, it kind of is like a black and white gradient with a bunch of sponsorships on here. I really don't like this one. I think it looks a little bit clunky and clumsy. Again, that's just my personal opinion, but that is Excelsior. And the final one I really do like, it's Auto Exotic. It's this sort of gray fill livery with a white stripe on the right-hand side. Uh, I just personally like the Auto Exotic logo, and I think it is kind of a nice blend of complex and simple touches uh, for this livery. But again, by far my favorite is the Jackal one. I'm pretty sure that's the one I go with for my final design. Now, after that, we need to move on to our respray options. We have a primary and a secondary. The primary is going to adjust the majority of the outside of the car, except for like the middle 20%. And that middle 20% is actually changed, you guessed it, by the secondary color. So by default, you can put some interesting color designs on there without even having a livery added. So those are your design options. There's no design changes for the interior. After that, it is roll cages. And the roll cage is like the one way in which you can actually get a roof per se on this car. You can't get one that's completely enclosed, but there are a handful of roll cage options that will not only alter the roll cage, but also change the color and design of the seats. So you're going to have to play around with that because there's actually 13 different options that you can choose from. So a lot that you can decide to do with this car. I actually kind of just like the plain old topless variant. I think it makes the, the car very unique. So that's what I went with. After that, there's a handful of skirt options too that you can choose from as well, like street skirts and racing skirts and carbon fiber variations of each one, which does lead to some extra cool livery designs. From there, you've got your spoiler choices. Now, it comes with a spoiler by default, uh, but you can choose a carbon one or a primary GT spoiler, aggressive spoilers, street spoilers, race spoilers, lots of different designs here. The car has to have a spoiler by default. There's actually no way to get rid of it. So uh, something to keep in mind right there. And I'm pretty sure these aren't custom rims. I feel like I've seen them before. Either way, they can't be changed via the Eifert app because they are chrome. So you wouldn't be able to change their colors regardless. I went through some of the sport wheels to try and find some that were matching. And I was kind of having a hard time, like putting my finger on one that was really identical to it. So I just ended up staying with the stock rims here. I think the closest one to it might actually be in the SUV category. But even then, it's really not a perfect match. So you can play around with that if you want. But just know that the stock wheels and rims, for that matter, cannot be changed with the iFruit app. So now that we've got this vehicle outside of the Los Santos Custom Shop, let's take a look at how the doors open. And you can actually open up everything, the trunk, the hood, obviously passenger and driver side doors. And it does reveal a pretty cool and colorful engine block in the back, which I do like. Now after that, let's take a look at how the headlights on this vehicle perform. There's no difference between the brights and the normal lights other than the brights get a lot uh, brighter, obviously. Uh, I do like the taillights on this car. The, the simple circles are, are really, really cool. Now, as far as the performance of this vehicle goes and how it feels, again, to me, it's very similar to the Hijack Rustin, where it's kind of one of those like unique sort of off-brand sports cars. Like, I don't believe this is going to be competing with the Pariah, at least from the, you know, couple of minutes that I had with it in single player. And I think a lot of people are going to be put off by this car because it's going to share all those similarities with the Hijack Rustin. And I don't think that vehicle was super popular just because it seems like a topless track car. And I don't know if that appeals to everyone. I think there's going to be two types of people that buy this vehicle. You've got car collectors that are interested in collecting all these vehicles, or they're going to be interested in the uniqueness of this car. And then there's going to be some people that just completely avoid it because it's not the type of sports car that they're after, at least in GTA Online. So again, I think there's going to be two types of people here. They're going to love it or they're going to hate it. There's going to be no in between at all. What do I think about the Ocelot Locust? I think it's fun and unique. I don't think there's enough customization options for a vehicle like this. 
And uh, again, I'm not sure how great it's going to be performance-wise, which is kind of important for a sports car. But other than that, it's fun. It is a bit pricey, but it's definitely another fun brand. We don't have a ton of Ocelot vehicles in the game, and uh, this is another fun vehicle that Rockstar has decided to add. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today, and that is 15 things you need to know about the Ocelot Locust before you end up buying it in Grand Theft Auto Online. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments down below. What do you think of this vehicle? Is it one that you're going to be adding to your garage when it's added into the game, or are you going to be skipping out on it? If you guys did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And remember to subscribe if you guys are new or you want to stay up to date on all the latest GTA 5 casino news, info videos, and more. And ring that notification bell, too. Sometimes YouTube just doesn't work. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll always be guaranteed to be notified when new videos arrive. But, of course, as always, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.